Hi everyone, today we're going to be going over the evolution of boat design. More specifically, we're going to look at what methods were used to move a boat forward and the evolution of engine designs. So first, we're going to look at power sources. So before the early 19th century, oars or wind was used. Most merchant ships used sailing ships. The 16th to the 19th century saw the dominance of sail-powered warships. The next power source we're going to look at is precipitating steam engines. These were piston engine steamships. Early steamships were fueled by wood, later on by fuel oil or coal. Later ships used side or stern paddle wheels. Later on they used screw propellers. Steam turbines came next. They were fueled by coal, later on by fuel oil or nuclear power. The marine steam turbine was developed by Sir Charles, rendered the reciprocating steam engine obsolete. Sir Charles is pictured on the right. Electric first appeared in the latter part of the 19th century. They are found on small lake boats. In the early 20th century, it started to be used on submarines. The submarines had a combined diesel-electric system. The diesel engines recharged the batteries on the surface, and then when the submarine was submerged, they ran off their batteries. The diesel systems on submarines were replaced by nuclear power, since with the nuclear power, they never have to resurface. The turboelectric transmission uses electric generators to convert the mechanical energy of a turbine, gas or steam, into electric energy. Then the electric motors convert the electric energy back into mechanical energy to power the drive shafts. It has the advantage of being able to power the ship's electrical systems. The ship picture below is the first turboelectric battleship. Diesel is of course another power source. The rise in fuel costs in the second half of the 20th century almost led to the demise of the steam turbine. Since the 1960s, most new ships have been built with diesel engines. Reciprocating diesel engines. Most modern ships use this as their prime mover. Gas turbines are commonly used in combination with other types of engines. Since the 1960s, many warships have been built with gas turbines. Liquefied natural gas engines is another power source. These are environmentally friendly alternatives. They help shipping companies comply with international rules about emissions. Next, we're going to look at the liquidified natural gas carriers. The natural gas is stored in a liquid state. Small amounts of boil-off gas must be constantly withdrawn in order to maintain the pressure and temperature. The boil-off gas provides the fuel for the ship's boilers. Next, we're going to look at nuclear power steam turbines. The nuclear reactor heats water to create steam to drive the turbines. There is some renewed interest in commercial nuclear shipping. The ship pictured below is the first nuclear powered cargo ship. Stirling engines, used on submarines, stores a compressed gas, which allows more efficient and cleaner external fuel combustion when submerged. This provides heat for the Stirling engine operation. So these work by a cycle of compression and expansion of air at different temperatures. Now we're going to look at different types of engines and different methods of moving a boat along. Of course, one of the oldest methods is sailing, when we use the wind to propel the vessel forward. The next method is called caterpillar. It was an early uncommon means of moving the boat along. Move the series of paddles. These paddles were on chains along the bottom of the boat and they moved the boat forward. It was first developed in 1782. The paddle wheel is a large wheel. The rotation of the paddle moves the boat forward, has been superseded by screws. Propeller, also known as screws. There are many different types that you can see on the boat. Next, we're going to look at a VSP. Provides instant thrust in any direction, often used on tugboats. It was first developed in the 1930s. Now let's take a look at a pump jet, also known as jet drive. Works by taking water in and then directing the water out through a nozzle. 
This is often found on personal watercraft. Obsolating flippers. First patented in 1997. It is seen on kayaks. And it's basically just a boat that you move your feet like a bike. And it moves the boat forward. Here are the credits. Thank you for watching.